We're going to look at no line watercoloring today, and this is an example. I made a little set of cards um, because I started playing and I had so many examples. I just went crazy. So this is the rose from, um, where did I put the stamps? Gosh, I hope I didn't lose them again. Uh, Petal palette, and that's um, that's you see you can see no lines, right? I mean, you can see that, right? There's no lines. It just looks like I'm an awesome artist. Um, and if you can tell in the background here, can't really tell if you can tell. There's just a little texture. I used the new embossing mats just to put some texture. There'll be pictures on my blog coming up, but I didn't really. I might have put something in the middle. I didn't on this one. And this is, again, that Nature's Twine uh, combo pack, and it's uh, Grapefruit Grove. All right, then there's this one. Same flowers. I just oriented them a little different. I used the stitch framelits, and I put some sequins, um, self-adhesive sequins. And then you can see in the back there's still texture. And again, I use that embossing um, mats with um, a framelit. Then there's all the envelopes. Oops, that envelopes. Oh, that's the back of the card. Smudgy. Here's um, my favorites are these butterflies. Um, and you can kind of see part of the lines in here, but it kind of actually helps the butterflies. So this one I cut out with the framelit, and I seem to have lost. This one didn't stick, but um, I just cut it out, made it cute. This one too. See, it's a little different. It's a little more watercolory in some spots. A, a lot more color blending happened there. And then this is another one. Um, I just kind of played around with where I was going to put all of the colors I use. And this time I added the faceted uh, mint macaron gem gems. Oh, I forgot to mention. Right here, this thing right there. Ding, ding, ding. This is this color is that sea soft sea foam. And I think it makes a great neutral for cards. It's just like subtle and beautiful. And again, I use the... Um, the embossing pads and then the the framelit to make the background so I had a little texture but nothing exciting and then here's another one it's my final one I um, again I had more more comp like colors mixing here but up here I did I did pretty well with kind of straight markering I think it was the first one I did and I learned from there and then created the rest so those are my um, beautiful cards I am going to use a piece of watercolor paper and I pre-cut my watercolor paper all the time or most paper actually I um, take a stack of whisper white or very vanilla or watercolor paper and I cut them at four by it's four by um, five and a quarter because that makes me happy then I'm ready to go and I can do a whole bunch of samples all at the same time okay this is the flowers I used from petal palette the butterfly is from Oh my, I can't even think of it. But the butterfly is currently living in Claire and Nicole's um, dining room. Apparently, I left it there yesterday. So I'm going to do these again instead of the butterflies, but it'll work. They're pretty. And the first step you do for no step, no line watercoloring is you stamp with Sahara sand, which is a light, light color, right? Pretty neutral. Hi, Charlene. All right, and all I do is you stamp off and again, and you want it very light on your paper. See, I don't even know if you can see that because it's so, all right, so here's what I do. My sister um, gave me these little dishes from her job. They throw them out, but now they're saving them just for me. And some of them had these little ridges inside. It looks like a paint palette which is awesome to me. I added water um, accidentally, you know, the other day, but or when I cleaned it up. But what I do is I, um, to watercolor, I don't use my ink pads because when I want to use a bunch of different colors, I have too many ink pads sitting around here. And as a clumsy human, I, I just end up with my elbows in them and then flipped over on my projects and it just never goes well. So I have started using these in my reinkers because I usually buy a reinker when I buy an ink pad so I can always make sure I'm up to no no good and I'm not behind. So today I'm using um this one is Daffodil Delight if I want, but uh 
some mango melody. And all I do is I put a couple drops in this tray. You can use any kind of tray you want. I just, these are reusable things. Um, then here's a little pumpkin pie. And you can see how dark they are in that tray. That'll change. Poppy Parade is just a beautiful color. I, I'm amazed. I don't think I liked it when it came out as an ink color long ago, but now I do. And then for a different shade, kind of tone of orange, Clipsal Coral. And you can see that all of these are very dark in this little tray. However, they are not going to be dark in a second. Now what I'm going to do, see what I mean? I schmutzed my paper. Luckily, I'm cutting this baby out, so it won't matter. But if I pull out that the dye a little, I can see how I have just the ink, right? And all you do then is you you color, you watercolor. I'm trying to make sure you can see it. It's kind of hard. And um, this is pumpkin pie. No, this is the yellow mango melody, my favorite. And with this one, I just kind of followed the lines of the petals and painted some different thinking trying to be an artist and think about how the light's coming in at it. And as, as you see, as you go, it, it changes its tone and all that. Then if I want a different color, I can just mix. So here's a little pumpkin pie for a little, little extra, oops. You, if you mix the colors while they're still wet, they run into each other. So I was trying not to do that, but I did anyway. Now I wanna add a little, um, what do you call it? Poppy Parade. Because I saw this rose. I posted it on my blog the other day. Um, I'm not really a rose kind of girl, but it was orange and just got my attention. And if you look carefully, I'm kind of following the lines. I'm going to let that dry just a little like this one because it's starting to, they're mixing too much. So I'm going to get some green out and... Um, Mossy Meadow is a good one. It's very, very dark. But, you know, as it goes, it can get lighter. And then I wanted to use a little shaded spruce action. I do need a lighter tone. Granny Apple Green. So once I start watercoloring, I, I stop paying attention to all the, exactly what ink is in there. All right, a little more water. I'm going to do the leaves. It's kind of got a teal hue to it right now. And if I want my dress to be a little drier, see, just picked it up. I can. A little deeper color. I just add more pigment. Oh, same color. Wow. Who knew that um, that would do that? But, all right, here we go. That might look a little better. The cool thing about watercolor paper is that it just um, soaks up quickly. So when you get your, it's hard to see, try not to get my head in the way. Oops, that's a leaf. All right, and then a little granny. Oh, I like that. Ooh, too much. So when it's too much, again, I think I've shown this before, although that might dry kind of cool. Um, I take part of, oh, this, I just cut this little absorby thing up and I just dab it and it, it takes it off. Makes it look good, cool. Well, that is a leaf, kind of. Now it's an orange leaf. Now see, that's just ugly, right? We don't want ugly, so we just try to, wow, you can see this. So what I do, that looked terrible, and I just blot off the water and it's like an eraser. So now I can redo this section, and I'm gonna make sure I add a little, there it goes again. You cannot touch wet water color or they squish together. There we go, leave a little line here.
Now Stamping Up put a video on their available on YouTube that shows this with a different stamp set. I found that the bigger the f the the bigger the image, the easier it is. Um, fine detailed images, you just don't get the oh disaster. You just don't get the look you want. Wow, well, Mr. Rose is going into the leaf. That's all there is to it. So I like the finer details. And then I cover up any of the Sayer sand I see. So I make sure I'm going all around and you can't really tell it's there. This little smushy over here. But it'll work. And then when it dries, you get those cool cards. You with me? Even when it dries, you're going to see it. I'll show you a card made of it later. It works. It's pretty awesome. You can also use... I'm just going to show you. This is a smaller um, flower, and it, it, it they don't come out quite as beautiful, but it does work. I stamp off, and then when I stamp, oops, that's too dark. You want it really light. Um, and I'll show you that difference. Oh, man, that was rough. I have this great brown color on my pet, my thing right now. The only thing I have is this old, well, I'm not sure it's old. I stole it from Bub upstairs, and um, now it's old. Okay, so if I wanted these little guys, when you color on there, do you see how it kind of, you can see it coming through more than you could on this one? But you can see the, even on with Poppy Parade as the outside, you can see the, you can see the Sahara Sand. And so our brushes are just, you'd have to get a different whole set of brushes to try to get the thin. These aqua painters can't go that thin to do watercolor in a tiny little space. But you can just get the watercolor look so it looks like the blobs of color. Oops. That's all right. That's a leaf. But I'm doing a terrible job right now. I had been doing a lot better. So I think I either I have to invest in other tools or Stampin' Up! needs to make me better tools because I just don't like the little ones being colored as much. Like that's just stuff. See you later. All right, now this one is kind of dry. And do you see how it changed even in the last five minutes? Um, so it looks, it looks pretty cool. And then when I use the thinlet to cut it out, it'll provide more of that easy shape. Or I can use my paper snips. Either way works.